Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, my. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Stavers Homestead. I'm Zach. I'm Jen. And we did something extremely exciting this past <laughs> we week. We did. We, it was a Father's Day mm -hmm. surprise kind of thing, um, and it meant a lot to both of us. Mm -hmm. wonder what it was. <laughs> and it is garden walk time. It has officially been probably two-ish weeks, I think, since our yeah. last garden tour, and there's been a lot of changes. Let's do it. <laughs> So before we deep dive into this bad boy, um, we always like to have our garden tours with a little bit of a theme. And today's theme is this hot yeah. and dry. Extreme heat. Extreme heat and Early no dry. rain. Yeah, way earlier than we normally get here in Kentucky. <laughs> normally this kind of drought comes late July, August time. Rusty, I prefer you not to lick my toes if that's okay. <laughs> Um, so that brings a lot of trial and errors that usually are later in the gardening season for us way sooner. So we've had to do a lot of hand watering, um, as I'm assuming most of you all have as well. Um, and the biggest thing is to remember, don't forget that because these plants will dry up so fast and die if we're not staying on this watering. Good things like rain barrels, catching your own rainwater when you can is a beautiful way to do it because there's nothing like rainwater. It's softer where you're faucet water is usually a harder water so it does keep them surviving but it doesn't always give them the nutrients that a rainwater would so let's see what ours looks like so we can't remember if we've showed you this bed this was the pea bed with the trellis that did absolutely awful so me and Zach and Raylan got in here one night ripped all the weeds out turns out that we had many invasive plants in here and then we replanted everything so first is a beautiful sunflower that's getting really big not close to opening yet, um, but it might be a dwarf. I don't remember. So if it is a dwarf, then it might be close. And then the rest of the majority of the bed is cucumbers up this way, which are flowering and doing really, really good in here. Um, they're doing better at choking out the weeds than the peas were, which is really good. And then the second half of most of the bed is watermelons. So that's going to be really cool. Um, no fruits just yet, but lots of flowers, lots of greenery. Lots of growth and a way better success than the bees. Yeah, so like she mentioned, some very, very invasive weeds that were in here. Um, we're in an area, look behind, I'm, hold on with me real quick. See this, all of this over here? This is our woods um, that's there. And a lot of that seed was flying over into this bed because it's the first one that's there. And basically we're at war with weeds because we do hand pick weeds all the time. Um, but when you have something that invasive, it's hard to take control. So we had to build our army of viney yes. takeover stuff. I said, we'll see which viney takeover stuff wins. Hopefully it's ours. And before we leave that bed, one more sunflower doing well. Right here, we got the rosemary that's still doing well. We're starting to clip a lot of our herbs and hanging them to dry. Here is a bunch of basil that has already came back. We just clipped it Friday yeah, and it came back really well. Making lots of fresh pestos and just using the basil. And here is bed number three, one of the more exciting beds. So one thing about this heat is this okra is loving life. So our okra is taking off and doing really well. Okra, it, the reason it's growing in the South is because it likes the heat. So one that's benefiting is definitely the okra. One thing I know that a lot of people are already starting to harvest are their zucchini and squash. Every year, they're always going to be your first ones. We got ours in a little later than everything else, so we're a little behind there. However, we do have our squash and zucchini starting to come. Knock on wood, no squash bugs yet. This is a new area. Squash has never been grown here before. So we'll see, but for right now, I'm pretty confident that we'll at least have a good harvest before they come, if they do come. On this trellis, we got some pickling cucumbers from Haas. They're a little bit slower to start. They didn't have the greatest germination, unlike the Beat Alphas from Haas over on that side, um, but they're gonna do well and climb up all over this trellis. Another thing that's doing really well in this heat is the peppers. You just have to keep water on them, but they love heat. So they're doing really good. Everyone's starting to bloom and get some peppers on them. There's a really big one. I can't remember which kind it is. But... Um, that one is supposed to, supposed to be a bell, but it looks like a banana. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, that one looks. I think that one's supposed to be bells as well. Lots of peppers coming though. Yeah, buddy. A lot of jalapenos over here. 
And then here we got my Mexican sunflower that's trying to start taking off. <laughs> it's that bead plant. You asked, I don't remember what it's Job's called. Tears. Job's tears. There you go. Uh, another Mexican sunflower and another regular sunflower. The loof is finally taken off and attaching everywhere. She's going to be so pretty here in a few weeks. It's a little slow. Um, last year we had a whole lot more growth this time, but I don't know. Ah, that's quite all right. They're, they'll take off. She's doing really well so far. We got that one. Then we got this one over here that's like following the path perfectly straight <laughs> up. But soon they'll start sending out shoots. And next thing you know, in like two weeks, this whole arch will be completely covered already. Here, these sunflowers are funny. So there's one there, 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 and there. And it's literally like a stepping post. They just keep getting bigger as they go up. And then in all of this bed are our green beans that we got growing. For the most part, everything's doing well. We've had to fight off a little bit of disease, a little bit of bugs. Uh, so that halted some of their growth. But overall, I think everything is coming back well and strong and doing really good. We've got lots of pumpkins growing here. Very excited about them. They're gonna take off on the trellis and just hang down. It's gonna be really pretty. Kinda wish we had put it in the front, but that's okay. It'll still be pretty back here. Yeah, once the loofa takes off, it'll really fill it in. Lots and lots of flowers. Now for the massive tomato bed. So you'll see um, uh, everything already tied up really well. We and uh, You can kind of look around and see stuff all in our grass. We had a not storm come through. Like we, did, we got like no rain. But it was it, a windstorm. Yeah, it was insane, like extreme winds. Thankfully we had tied the uh, plants up literally like an hour before that. It was starting to come as we were finishing up. Because if we didn't, that wind probably would have snapped a lot of these tomatoes. And so I'm so thankful that we did. Y'all ready to see a bunch of them? So we have green tomatoes absolutely everywhere and all of these tomatoes over there as well. And everything is doing so well. They're so healthy, which is the most exciting part of it all. Um, usually tomatoes are a little bit more finicky. They're the ones that are going through more stuff, but not this year, not so far. And they are already, how tall would you say? At least three foot tall, right? Yeah. Some of them are taller than me. Yeah, and count 12 inches from the bed. Yeah. So we're probably looking at five, maybe five, six foot already for some of these uh, if you took them off the bed. But there are, I mean, we're about to be just running through our ears and tomatoes. Cannot wait. Me either. Tomato sandwiches coming yes. soon. One thing to remember with tomatoes, um, if you're seeing some plants uh, that don't have fruit on them, which we have those as well, there's early comers and late comers uh for example the one i always know because it's one of our favorites pink ox hearts are never first flowers they they do not first flower they do not give you the first fruits they always come in a little bit later in the season so depending on your variety may depend on when your tomatoes are going to start coming in some sooner than others but that's why it's always good to mix a good variety of different types of tomatoes in there just so it's not all at once and you're getting your harvest you know throughout the entire year okay down here these are our sugar baby watermelons so there's the like the personal size more for the kids it's like a personal size for them so they don't get too heavy so that's why we grow them on here and i hope they come up because it's our favorite watermelon yeah they're, they're i mean they're little. coming they're yeah. just a little bit smaller at the moment and then over here are the kajari melons which are finally starting to grow a little bit more and then i don't know if we showed you this or not but this was the corn bed and we had terrible germination come out of them um, wasn't due to actually germination. It was more of animals and stuff that was getting a hold of it. But now it's full of pumpkins, winter squashes, other types of squashes. And we're just going to let this bed completely be taken over by all the vines and be really cool. Yeah, we direct sowed the whole entire thing. So they're everywhere. Yeah. And that's why they're not as big as some of the other ones. Because we just direct sowed them after we took the corn out or what, we, what came up as corn. Um, so that's why they're a little bit behind. But they'll still take off. And then down here on the back trellis, we have a few honeydews and cantaloupes that are starting to attach to the arch. Uh, the tomatoes are really enjoying it as well as some support because it is just a jungle up in there. Um, but they should be fine. They should take off. And once they get up here, they'll really have plenty of room to spread out. Look, babe, you got calendula flowering. Oh, it's so pretty. And you can kind of cut them so they'll bush out even more. I just love them. And all the rest of them are right behind them and should be flowering soon too. Just remember, as you're getting those flowers, go ahead and keep cutting them because the more you cut, the bushier they'll get, just like when it comes to zinnias as well. 
So that is your primary highlights of the big garden. Now it's time to get over into the kitchen garden, which is a chaos mess. I've got to get the weed eater out and do some weed eating. It's wild. However, the plants are not wild no. with weeds, but they're they, happy. yeah, they're very happy. And that's gonna be exciting to show you. Stay on guard, dude. Caught you sleeping earlier. There's a chicken and the green beans. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, coming over to the jungle that is the kitchen garden. In this first L, we got all kinds of green beans, again, that are doing better than what's happening in the big garden. Um, but they are really looking good and really starting to flower and getting some green beans all over them. Over here, Jen and I didn't know it. But by golly, sweet potatoes love the heat as well. Apparently. Apparently. And they took off. I mean, it is just completely vined over everywhere now, which is what we wanted. And we wanted to just pour over this because it's one of the first things that people see when they pull in the driveway and it's just so beautiful. I think we're going to have a good sweet potato harvest back. I think so. And I'm excited because I love sweet potatoes. Me too. Old Comfrey's looking sad because she just got another cutting. Um, she is just doing amazing. We've got so much Comfrey drying. Um, which is a good thing because we love to use comfrey and all of Jen's medicinal medicinal things that she makes. And then lastly, when it comes to what's growing, um, our awesome ground cherries we have here. They are very big and huge and doing great. I was trying to see if any were ready. I don't think we're quite there yet, but it is loaded. Thank you, T-Bird. It is loaded with all kinds of ground cherries over here back on the porch the garlic is doing really well you can start seeing the nice flaky paper that it's got on there and so we will be taking these down to our basement in the very very near future i would say in the next couple days but they are curing very well <laughs> we're back in the store now feels really good in here yeah um the store has been doing really well we haven't updated too much here and there we have i um, mean it's been awesome with the response with a lot of you that have came to drive and see us and see the farm and a lot of people local that have been really interested that have stopped by. Yeah. So we don't have fresh produce yet, that kind of hurts. That's mostly what people are looking for. Um, soon there will be plenty, but there's plenty of other stuff in here if you do make the trip or if you're local and you come by and see us. It's a lot of fun. We really like spending our days down here. Um, it's mostly Carol, but when she's not able to, we're down here and it's just been a really good time. It really has. I mean, it's just, it blows my mind every day. There's people that are coming to the store and I don't know why I expected anything less because she's a freaking genius and does everything amazing. But I just, I expected it to be more just event type things or just the weekend or something. But it's, it's I've loved seeing the response. Yeah. So before we jump into the big thing that Jen and I did, first off, if you've seen it, comment down below because <laughs> you should have seen it throughout this video, but we wanted to explain it. Uh, before we get into that, I did want to show you all, we have a new design um, that I'm really excited about. I really like it. So it is make milk raw again with the styroshomestead.com underneath of it. I'm so excited for the show. I've been wanting it for a while. I was glad that the design was finally able to be completed and we were able to get it on merchandise that we have. So if you're in the store, it'll be here. If not, you can go to our website and we have all this stuff available to order online uh, to ship out. But Pretty cool day, don't you? Also, don't forget to be checking Etsy. We've still got a few things in there, tinctures and some calendula salve. Mm -hmm. The comfrey and the most popular tinctures are already gone. They went very quick. We heard you. Thank you, you all. We hear that. you. <laughs> yes. this, is the, this is when we have these new tinctures yeah. and stuff like that come out. You all respond, and we know what to make more of and what to make less of. Mm -hmm. Burdock root will be coming back, we promise. We understand that that was a very popular one, so we'll make more uh, the next time it comes up. But. but there also is still some really good tinctures in there, so go check those out. And when this video goes live, there is now soaps. There is not a ton, um, but they will be coming weekly. So yes. there'll be small quantities each week, different scents. Um, so it'll be a small batch this week and from here on out. But if you go quick, you are able to get some. Yes. And as always, thank you all so much for that support. It means a lot. Um, I told him I was going to share this. It's been something that. that I've been working on for a few weeks, but I still have a few weeks left to prove. Um, but with the Etsy store, the goal, my goal has been the whole time to replace both of his paychecks that he gets every month so that I can show him proof that he can be done with his job and that we can be full time on the farm. So just know that every penny that you spend on our Etsy store, which is all homemade products, 
is going towards that goal, towards him being able to come home. And I hope that inspires you all as well. Don't just look at it as you make our goal happen. Let that inspire you to maybe take the same journey and do the same kind of thing it's, if it's something that you're interested in or you want to do for your spouse. So that does kind of lead us into our surprise. And before we jump right into that, I did want to express, you know, and I really do appreciate the response that everyone gives to everything that we do here on our farm. Um, it's been her dream and one of those things when she says prove it like i know it's proven like i know that people will buy it it's more of that consistency factor if it will just make i don't want it to be one month great and then the next month there's no kind of thing so that's what we're trying to prove to our both of ourselves is that it'll have a consistent factor and it can be something that would support us without that fear of how we're going to pay our bills kind of thing um, because ultimately like she mentioned our end goal is for us to be fully operational farm and not have any other outside for the man jobs and everything yeah. we do is for us. And that also means spending more time with you all as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not yeah. trying to pull on heartstrings, but it would. It would mean way more time towards YouTube, towards Etsy, towards you all if you come here, because right now not everyone can see both of us when he has to work. So it would be full time. Yeah. Our farm could be open all the time and get to see all of your beautiful faces. Yeah, and I would probably have more videos out there as yeah. well. So yeah, it's a win-win, right? It's a win-win. Okay, you ready to tell him? Yeah. What did we do? What did we do? So you all know the Appalachian Mountains are something that we call home. It is our home. It was our home before we lived here. We knew this is where we wanted to spend the rest of our lives. Even if the rest of our lives didn't allow that, you know, we can't predict that. We know this is where our hearts are and where our hearts will always be. So Jen has three tattoos. Yes. I have zero zero tattoos and her and i've been talking for many years on her first off trying to convince me to get one which i've always wanted one but i needed it to have some kind of special meaning behind it and i didn't want it to be cheesy um well this past weekend her and i decided to run down to gallenberg and we've got these matching heartbeat of Let's appalachia see. tattoo there So he's gonna grab something real quick, but this design of ours, um, it was made by Kayla and it's been really important to us for this past year and a half. We've tried to incorporate it on everything that we can because the heartbeat of Appalachia truly, we feel like is our heartbeat. Like it's a part of us, it's who we are. It's made us who we've been. Um, and when we moved here, these mountains have kind of gotten us through the past two years. It's yeah. been tough, a lot of things happened, a lot of tragedy, but if you have something to cling to, to get you through it, it makes it a whole lot easier. And that's what we've done with these mountains. So the, when the design came up, we, like I said, we just tried to put it on everything. We've got it on shirts, we've got it on mugs. Um, and now it is on our arms. Yeah. <laughs> it's the exact same one, it's identical. Um, so if you have bought a mug or a shirt with that on it, you now have our tattoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's the only one. A lot of people ask, like, well, where'd you find it? Like, no, Kayla designed it for yep. us. Like, it's, it's ours. There's similarities out there, but this one specifically is Stivers Homestead design that is all ours, and I couldn't be happier with it. Um, didn't hurt as bad as I thought it was. <laughs> um, it, it, unfortunately, kind of was like, kind of like it. And so uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, like, bite that bug to, like, one more because I love the simplicity of this. Um, and we know there's mixed feelings when it comes to tattoos. Doesn't really matter. This is. If you our... don't like them, don't like them. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to. We're just expressing how we express ourselves. Um, like I said, this is my first one I have. It's her first showing one. Yeah. I mean, that's not like on her back or something like that. Um, so I, I love it, and I don't think there was a better way for us to express our love for each other, for this area, and for the mountains because the mountains are always calling to us. We've answered, and we don't hang up anymore. And now whatever happens, who knows what the future holds, but we'll always have a piece of it on That's us right. and that'll never change. Yep. you all knew some of the stuff where where you're sitting at different <laughs> homesteaders places like right now you're on a door that's uh, on a hutch that likes to swing <laughs> um but my goodness i hope you all enjoyed today's garden tour um i hope that your all's garden is being strong and you're able to fight off those bugs and most importantly fight off this heat mm -hmm. uh, remember the plants are going to love it but you have to put a lot of work into it for them to enjoy it um, don't overdo it. Do things early, do things late. Um, so you're not out there getting heat exhaustion because it is so easy to do in this, um, but stay strong. 
you're the wait's almost over we're about to harvest all kinds of stuff you just got to get there all right y'all if you're new here hit that subscribe button down below for us until the next one bye, bye.